Jay Lee Richmond was a professional baseball player best known for pitching the first perfect game in Major League history, the most rare pitching feat of all time. However, he was not a baseball prodigy, as he had struggles with the opposing competition all the way up to college and somewhat beyond. Dictionary.com defines the perfect game as a baseball game in which the same player pitches throughout the full game without allowing any player on the opposing team to reach first base by a base hit, base on balls, error, or any other means. In 210,000 games, there have only been 23 perfect ones, and no pitcher has ever thrown more than one. Lee Richmond was a pitcher in the National League uh, in the 19th century, pitching for six seasons, and had a fairly successful career, but would be hardly remembered today except by historians and serious baseball fans, except that he pitched professional baseball's first perfect game in 1880 pitching for the Worcester team against the Clevelands in a National League game in the Massachusetts City, June 12, 1880. Richmond was born May 5, 1857, as the youngest of Cyrus R. Richmond and Elizabeth Richmond's nine children, including six sons and three daughters. He was the son of a Baptist minister and the youngest of uh, nine children. Richmond's education began by attending public elementary and middle schools near his hometown in Ohio, then enrolling in the preparatory department of Oberlin College at age 16, where he attended for three years. His older brother, Willis, was a member of the school's baseball club seven years earlier. Lee followed in his footsteps, joining the preparatory school's club when he was present at the institution. In 1876, Richmond studied at Brown University, where he played outfield and pitched for the college's baseball varsity nine. He was elected Brown's class president that same year and played for the university's first ever football team. However, his pitching tactics were poor compared to opposing pitchers, and he couldn't seem to master the curveball. Nevertheless, in 1879, he led Brown to the championship. On June 2nd, he pitched a game for Worcester and was drafted, becoming a professional that same day. On June 9th, he played in the championship for Brown versus Yale, which his team triumphed in. He came to Brown University in 1876 after having played baseball at Oberlin College, a preparatory school, uh, for three years. Upon his arrival at Brown, he uh, immediately played baseball for them in the fall season of 1876 and continued to play there through 1879. He progressed in his skills uh, rapidly and by 1879 led Brown to the collegiate championship over the other Eastern schools. In 1880, after getting his professional debut, J. Lee Richmond decided to quit playing with Brown University and to play solely with the Worcesters. The Worcesters were a professional minor league team in Massachusetts that Richmond played for for many years and most of his professional career, beginning in the year 1880. At that time, most players did not wear gloves as they do today, which made outfielding a more complicated experience. He also made his professional debut in the spring of 1879. Uh, playing uh, for Worcester, which was in the National Association, Worcester Mass, a minor league team. A very successful season with them. And he also made his major league debut, pitching one game for Boston uh, of the National League. The following year, 1880, he did not play for Brown University, but he did play professionally once again and played exclusively for the Worcester, Massachusetts team, which was now in the National League. J. Lee Richmond pitched the first perfect game on June 12, 1880. He did it while playing for the Worcesters against the Clevelands in a National League game. Although this accomplishment seems like it deserves much fame, he didn't get all the fame he wanted or deserved at the time. Many newspapers and societies didn't know what to call the game, as they had never seen anything like it before. Although, many people did recognize him and his outfielders for the accomplishment of not making an error. Uh, pitching for Worcester, he, uh, 
in their first major league season and he was very successful, especially at the start of the year. And on June 12th of 1880, pitched baseball's first perfect game, a major league game against the Clevelands of the National League. He won the game one to nothing, and the game was little noted in the press uh, for his effort, but for the fine team effort it was. Uh, many papers commented that it was the most brilliant game ever played and the finest game on record. Commented on the Worcester defense not making an error. Richmond's effort was pretty much overlooked at the time. It was not until 1909 that the uh, term perfect game was coined. And by that time, what Richmond had done 29 years earlier had become recognized as it was throughout his life. Richmond's career lasted several more years as a pitcher and an outfielder. But 1880 was his finest season. He won 32 games for the Worcester team, uh, being an everyday pitcher. Although Richmond already had a successful baseball career, he decided he would return to the area near his hometown and study medicine. Beginning then in 1880, he spent his summers playing baseball and his winters uh, studying medicine, uh, either practicing with a doctor in a doctor's office or going to school, first at the College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City, and then at the uh, University of the City of New York, where he was awarded his MD in 1884. He used uh, money earned from baseball uh, to pay for that education, and that money was considerable. In 1880, he was said to be the highest paid player in the game. After uh, graduating, he returned to Northeastern Ohio, where he practiced medicine for a period of time. Until the year 1886, Lee practiced medicine in northeastern Ohio, near where he grew up in Sheffield. Then, he gave medicine up and looked into education, becoming a principal in Geneva. When he retired, and upon that retirement, he uh, became dean of medicine at the University of Toledo and remained in that position until he died in 1929. Richmond passed away in 1929 at the age of 72. He had three daughters during his lifetime with his wife, Mary Naomi Chapin, who he met while working as a professor. Throughout his life, he kept in touch with many of his Brown teammates and never forgot how much that experience meant to him. John Hussman says, The fame from that was not immediate, but once it arose, it lasted for his entire lifetime.